Welcome to this presentation of UPSL Soccer Action, live on YouTube and presented by the Atlantic Soccer Media Group. It's Super Soccer Saturday here in Snellville, Georgia for this presentation of UPSL Georgia Conference Premier Division action. Kalanji Pro Profile taking on Georgia Athletic SC and it's next on ASMG TV. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Charlie Jordan Field here in Snellville, Georgia, for ASMG's coverage of the UPSL Georgia Premier Conference. Kalanji Pro Profile taking on Georgia Athletic SC. Larry Weaver here going to bring you up to everything. Get ready for kickoff. Danny Catula will bring you all the action here at Charlie Jordan Field. We take a look around the league. We look at the scores from last week. FC Atlanta with a 2-2 draw against the UMAFC. Atlanta United Academy with a 2-0 loss to FC Birmingham at home. Atlanta City also following at home 4-1 to Dalton United. 1-0 victory for Georgia Athletic against SSL. Coming up against the parent co parents of SSL, Kalanchi Pro Profile tonight. Potros FC with a great win over Kalanchi Pro Profile. They all need to bounce back today. And North Georgia United with a 2-3 loss to Legends FC. We take a look at the scores and the matches for this week. We just saw SSL win against North Georgia United 7-1. It's currently 5-1 Dalton United over Legends FC. Still waiting to get an update on UMA FC against Potros as well as Georgia Revolution against FC Atlanta. Just about ready to kick off at the same time on our second chan our second team is over at Duluth High School for the Atlanta City FC match versus FC Birmingham. So you got two matches to watch tonight on ASMG TV for this holiday weekend. And then of course Kalanji Pro Profile and Georgia Athletic. We look at the table as it was when we entered today. Potros FC at the top of the table. Georgia Athletic right behind them, just one point behind in the goal differential. Legends, they were in third place, but they find themselves right now on the outside looking in on that loss to Dalton United. It's going to allow Dalton United to move up the table seven places is what finds you into the playoffs. Atlanta United Academy, FC Birmingham, Georgia Revolution, and Dalton United all in those spots. Dalton United will find themselves higher up the table after that result. Kalanji on the outside looking in. UMA, FC, FC Atlanta, and Atlanta City, they're all in those bubble spots. North Georgia United clearly at the bottom of the table. SSL with those three points will shoot them into that soft spot. We'll see who at the end of the day is it going to be, or the yeah, at the end of the day, if, is it going to be FC Atlanta? Is it going to be UMA or is it going to be Atlanta City that are going to find themselves with North Georgia at the bottom of the table? We'll find out in a few moments. Just about get ready for the kickoff and ceremonies here we'll step away for the national anthem and then we'll bring on danny katula to bring you all of the play-by-play -play action Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Charlie Jordan 
for this UPSL Georgia Premier Division action. Kalanji Pro Profile taking on Georgia Athletic FC. At this time, we ask you if you could please rise for the playing of our national anthem. Well, it has all the elements of a compelling encounter, doesn't it? Kalangji Pro Profile here at home in Snellville. Shiloh High School, the venue. And we'll see who the victory belongs to, if anyone, over the course of these 90 minutes. Match week three of the UPSL Georgia Conference Premier Division action between Kalangji Pro Profile and Georgia Athletic SC. Kalangji, the juggernauts, the seasoned veterans, and every year they are title hopefuls with good reason. They've got one of the strongest squads on paper that we have seen them with in quite a while. Henry Playtest has been a part of this team for years and years. One of many veterans in this team, Grant Carr and Kaimani Irving on the left side of defense have also called Kalangji home for a while. Abrima Dafma and Alhaji Tambadu are the other defenders in that mix. Tony Tiente, after spending a year with Atlanta United 2 in the professional ranks, Joins Joseph Samuel and Wilfried Chupa Kamdem in midfield. Strike Force is three deep today. Patrick Okonkwo, former Atlanta United man who spent last season in the lower divisions of Germany, joins Anthony Sumo, although they're switched in which wing they occupy. They are both in that role. Okonkwo tends to be a central striker. He is replaced in that role by Mamadou Jallo. Bruno Kalangji at the helm of Pro Profile and indeed the entire KSA Academy team. They're in white today. Their adversaries will wear pink. It's Georgia Athletic SC second in the table, although they could be overtaken by Dalton behind them, who have had a solid game themselves. Daniel Delgado is the goalkeeper. Victor Sus with Martin Gutierrez, Julia Marquez, and Andres Perez make up the four-man back line, a classic 4-4-2. Fidel Mba moves up to a midfield role today. Alexis Ferrer is the captain alongside Julio Batista. And Diego Alvarado, they are the midfielders. Up top, Nazario and Bombio will be the right side equivalent of striker Luis Munoz. Michel Russoniello is at the helm of Georgia Athletic. And at the helm of both sides in blue is Mary Fernandez, one of the better referees in the entirety of UPSL, certainly one of UPSL Georgia's finest. And two of UPSL's finest in terms of teams. Doing battle today, Georgia Athletic, much the newer kids on the block. But they have certainly been the better side after two matches. Match day three for these two is underway. It's family night here for Kalangji Pro Profile. They will be looking to treat their supporters to what would be a solid win. Danny Catula with you all. Glad you're with us as we kick things off. Larry Weaver is the technical director this evening, and he'll pop in across the evening with his analysis as well, wearing many hats for us across the evening. I want to thank everyone else who is here with us in Snellville. It cooled down a degree or two since the earlier match kickoff. It's a doubleheader this evening. We're in the second part of it already after SSL left the really opened the floodgates in the second half of their 6-1 victory 
over North Georgia United. Didn't get a whole lot out of their trip down from Calhoun. Long Beach Pro Profile, one of the few teams has been around really since the beginning, all the way back to the Origin League, the Atlantic Caribbean League, that preceded UPSL Georgia's national status before they joined forces with UPSL. That is how long in the history we're talking about for Pro Profile. They have been successful since the word go and continue to be one of the more formidable names in the division. Early free kick conceded as Anthony Sumo on the right was hacked down. And a reminder, Kalonji sitting mid-table, of course, very early in the season. And when one lost the show for their opening two contests, Georgia Athletic, on the other hand, a perfect six points from six possible on goal differential by just one goal. They trailed Potkos FC, who were in action earlier today, should just be about finishing up their match, and we have yet to see any sort of score update from that contest. But for now, we can tell you that passing both those teams on goal differential with their big lead is Dalton United. They are just about finished in their contest over Legend FC as well. So the table set, here's Sumo. Sumo knocked down, and well, it was right in the view of the assistant referee on that side, but he won't get any mercy. The home fans, you can hear in the background, would have liked to see a foul given. Sumo will chase another one, and it's just going to stop in a perfect position. Sumo could not get the required touch. Well, let's bring Larry Weaver in early on. Larry, we can see the replay here. What do you see in this one? Potentially a foul? When you look at here, Anthony Sumo, always one to use his body to get an advantage, comes in, gets clean, tackled by number three. It was clean tackle to me. Already having a conversation with that AR. Anthony Sumo, he loves to use that body to try to get an advantage. Looking at the replay for me, I think it's a good decision from the officials. I'm there with you, Larry. Thanks for your advice as always. William Marquez is the man who sports the number three in pink today. And I think he gets himself in good position, doesn't initiate any contact. For me, Sumo is looking for the foul more than anything. So a solid start from both sides. Two clubs who will want to get out of the gates quickly with the better attacking sides in the league. A week ago, you saw Larry bring you those uh, results from match week two where Georgia Athletic were at home to SSL. And they were able to secure a 1-0 victory against, at that time, a scoreless Soccer Saves Lives FC. And, well, scoring is slow long, no longer, I should say. A six-goal performance that unsurprisingly led them to their first three points of the season. Longji with... The more solid and secure possession inside of five minutes. How can they utilize it to their benefit? That will be the story of the day. Wilfred Kupa was trying to send the ball through. Too many bodies in pink in the area. I can straight clearance away and Kalangji will try again. Lots of star power in this team on the ball, Tony Tiente. One of the few guys who have left this Kalangi outfit for greener pastures, found their way to professional contracts at pretty high levels. Tiente, one of the more prolific examples of exactly how far Kalangi graduates can go. Of course, it starts pretty young. It's an entire soccer academy that Kalangji boasts, all under the leadership and direction of Bruno Kalangji, the academy's namesake. Previously played under the KSA name here in UPSL before they changed their top level side to Kalangji Pro Profile. Some slightly updated branding a few years back. And it is 
been the way you see it now ever since. The way it's been early on has been Kalangji asking all the questions. Georgia Athletics struggling to get on the ball. Hard to determine, Larry, exactly who the favorites are tonight. Kalangji, of course, on their home ground. It's a promotional night for them. Expecting more supporters than normal in the stands. And they are the traditional power here in the league. Georgia Athletic have had a hotter start, though. Tough to really tell who's the favorite here. I think we've got a really good 90 minutes of football in front of us. You take a look at this. this. Well, let's come back yeah. to that. A chance along the goal yeah. line, and it is yeah. picked up. Nice alert defensive efforts. Daniel Delgado is there, the goalkeeper. Back to you, Larry. Sorry for the interruption. No problem. You take a look at this Kalanji Pro Profile team. They were the powerhouse of the conference for the 2021 season. They made it to the national playoffs both in the spring and in the fall. They took spring of 2022 off, and then they really were struggling in the 20, or I should say they took fall off, and they really struggled in the 2023 season trying to find themselves back into the league after they took a season off and they've not had the same success that they had in the prior you look at this season they brought a lot of their players back that are their veterans they're a large veteran squad that's right and can the veterans grab the opener they'll certainly have a solid chance to a deflection fell favorably and it stayed in struck the post we're still playing and now have we brought it back well, that would have been quite a delayed decision. Play was allowed to continue for a while. And what have they decided here in the end? The AR has decided that it went off of the goalkeeper out, so it's going to be a corner kick for Kalanji Pro Profile. Well, there we go. Off of your screen, the relevant assistant referee raises his flag and decides the ball did travel out of play. A corner kick will come the first, as a matter of fact across the evening and well no shortage of dangerous weapons inside the box on set pieces tonight for the boys in white probably the stronger side on paper in the run of play when you've got guys like Patrick Aconquo you've got guys like Tony Siente as well but maybe even more of an advantage for them on set pieces this evening Georgia Athletic for their part certainly not shabby there's a reason they have won two of two Especially there in midfield, he's the captain, so there's always an extra eye on him. But Alexis Ferrer in central midfield is one of those guys who can just pull strings at a moment's notice and change the course of a match with his passing. And, well, looks like a bit of holding up. Mary Fernandez saw it too. And you imagine there's a free kick coming. In a dangerous position for Kalonji. We'll see it again. A little bit of a WWE grab there, just kind of holding back. That would have been a nice move in wrestling, wouldn't it have? But in soccer, of course, it is a violation and a free kick will result. Let's see what Kalonji can conjure up on this occasion. And it goes directly at goal and the near post clearance was required and accomplished. And Georgia Athletic will complete the job of clearing this one away. No nonsense from them early on. They haven't necessarily had a whole lot of attacking impetus, Larry, but at the same time, mistake-free early on. So far, so good. Playing the chess match, deciding to elect to go for defense for Georgia Athletic so far, allowing to just absorb these attacks from Kalanji Pro Profile. You get the feeling it'll be a long evening for them if they can't take a bit of pressure off and get forward themselves at times. This will be one of those moments where they can potentially break away and hold on to some possession themselves if they play things in that fashion. They will go short and they will possess, although it's given away rather cheaply. Nice ball through, slipped in, chance on goal! And that's how quickly it can happen. 10 minutes gone, and Kalanji Pro Profile have the reward for their opening dominance. 1 0 is their lead. Take a look at this, Danny. A mistake given quickly 
trying to start on that free kick, taken away on the far side, beautiful through ball, and just slotted absolutely with precision. Well, a great goal. It was solid defensive work to win the ball back. Knew where to go with it. Excellent run as well. And just like that, it is 1-0 Kalangji Pro Profile showing their quality. And they lead by that 1-0 scoreline here at home at Shiloh High School. And this was something that was a bit of, a, of an asterisk for us coming into this season, Danny, is that how much of a veteran squad that Kalanji was putting into their roster. They had exposed themselves by playing a lot of separate leagues at the same time, wasn't really putting a good product on the field here in the UPSL Georgia Conference. Bruno Kalanji doubled down on his commitment to this UPSL Georgia Conference, and you can already tell the results. Well, and it's this type of team, Georgia Athletic, that comes for the casual fan out of nowhere and starts to really force the traditional champions like Kalangji, like you think of Jenga Atlanta in the past, to really reassess their priorities because these are much tougher sorts of matches than they ever used to be a few years back. And well, we do see the uh, attacking intent dialed up a bit immediately. Solid response for Georgia Athletic. They have started to press the issue now that they've gone a goal down. And it's certainly not too early to imagine Georgia Athletic making something out of this match themselves. First corner of the night for them. Well, as we like to say, hashtag response time. You have five minutes to respond and get yourself back into this match. Alexis Ferrer, he's the captain. He will deliver the service. And it finds a teammate, missed mostly by Marquez, sent it again! And it's really solid defensive work to clear it away after a nice parry. Goalkeeper does his job. Henry Pleites is there for a reason. Put it on display. Here in the right corner, trapped in a little bit was Mbomio. Nazario Mbomio. Wasn't able to hold on, but his team grabbed possession again. In part thanks to the midfield work of Fidel Mba. He plays one out to the right and nothing doing. Trying to win the ball back. Mbomio, and now, well, a couple of players on the ground. No response from the referee about either of those challenges. If you're asking me, I would say the first one looked fair. The second one, maybe not so much. And as two players continue to need treatments, Alonji will do the sportsmanlike thing and allow for play to go out and those players to be treated. Quarter hour in, and well, maybe a bit of controversy there, but aside from that, it's just been good football on both sides. Kalangji have taken their one major chance. Georgia Athletic still waiting for it. Yeah, I really didn't see anything in those challenges in a malicious form, Danny. That's one of the caveats of sticking your foot in for a challenge with these thin boots that we that, that are produced these days. They're not quite like the Sambas of old, are they? Those thick skinned Adidas shoes. Yeah, there's no five uh, F-50s out there anymore. <laughs> That's right. Haven't been for a while. Yeah. There were uh, two on the floor. It was Luis Munoz in the 11 and the captain Ferrer. They were both needing a bit of attention. And as I understand the ruling, if two players go down to a genuine injury at the same time of the same team, Neither one of them is required to leave the pitch, whereas normally a field player would have that requirement. They have interpreted the rule that way down there on the pitch as well. And so we will restart with 11 on 11. Well, what can Kalangji try and add to their 1-0 advantage? 
Second goal would certainly improve their feeling on how they stand in this contest. Georgia Athletic would like to start to make their mark, wouldn't they? And when you talk about injuries, Danny, one thing that's changed in the MLS, if a player's injured and has to be treated by the trainer, they have to elect to stand out for three minutes before allowed back into the competition of play, not implemented down here in the lower leagues of UPSL. That's right, not as of yet. Interesting, though, because it was one of those rule changes. There were a few every year that get tested in MLS Next Pro. One uh, little feature of those matches that's been that way for a while and I doubt we'll see implemented in MLS anytime soon is the uh, penalty kick rule. So you can't have a genuine draw in a league contest. They'll go to penalties and determine a winner who will get two points in a penalty uh, I, now. I'm, I'm, a, I'm fine with that one staying in the lower <laughs> tiers. Uh, As just, am I. Yeah. And yet the other one that that we'll see how it gets implemented as it gets entered is the blue card rule. We'll see how that one goes in its infancy creation. Yeah, I saw rumblings of that. I don't think that's even been implemented in the MLS Next Pro quite yet. Uh, for those who don't know, that's the uh, third tier, more or less, division of U.S. soccer that is almost entirely made up of MLS reserve sides who used to compete in leagues such as USL Championship, USL League One. They are now members of their own league. You do have the occasional independent club in there as well. Chattanooga FC, the best current example of that. And that's where you see some kind of tinkering, some lab work, if you will, for MLS considering future changes. They usually go there to see how they fare at first before they decide to implement them in the real deal, you could say. And of course, one team here in the UPSL Georgia that's represented in both the MLS and MLS Next Pro divisions, Atlanta United, who field their academy side here. And they have been another one of those highly successful teams in the division alongside Kalonji, alongside Dalton United, those juggernauts of the scene. But then again, it ended up being Atlanta City coming out of nowhere with the final earned bid in the playoffs, made it through a absolute serious slate of opponents three rounds went through unscathed and earned a bid to the upsl national playoffs made a dent in their first national appearance as well moving on to lose to eventual second place finishers st louis city fc academy another mls side putting their academy in putting in a cross on this corner kick kalangji nothing doing off the foot of and Danny it really showcases the competition here in the UPSL when Atlanta United Academy originally joined they were only going to join for the off season of the MLS next and it was the level of the competition that they elected to play the entire season instead of only playing the one season that's right it does prove to you exactly what type of talent we are talking about and, well, in the meantime, that will go over for a goal kick over there, chasing it Looked like it was Madhu Jallo out there. Well, a goal kick to come for Georgia Athletic, who have yet to fully grab a foothold in this contest. Minute 21, and have yet to register what I would consider to be a genuine chance, a serious shot on goal. Kalangji have really only had the one, and they, of course, did dispatch it. They have the one to lead as a result. Well, we've gone to some sort of break. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out for you, break. Danny, because we've come off of the field. There's been a, a recognition of something from 
the referees were trying to verify here what exactly. Well, Larry, it's uh, I'm not there in person, but it seems to be awfully sunny. No inclement weather over there, if I'm not mistaken. Nothing like a lightning strike or thunder. Negative. We have pure skies just in the low 70s. We just got done with, you know, the wind has, has dropped down. We're down to about 10 to 12 miles an hour. So it's an absolutely gorgeous night. One would say it's a beautiful day for soccer. I would certainly say that. And then the only other thing coming to mind for me would be uh, a induced water hydration break. But if we didn't have one earlier in the day when it was even warmer, I'd be surprised to see one now. Yeah, and with the wind, it's actually kind of cool. So I'm not quite sure. Maybe we can get a, a information at halftime of exactly why that was done. I mean, it sure does seem like a hydration break to me. Yeah. Interesting. About 70 degrees, maybe a few more out there. And, well, I mean... It's hard to say ever that a hydration break isn't warranted. You'd rather be safe than sorry with those sorts of things. And this is going to be on a goal kick to get back underway. Now, you know, the one other thing to keep in mind is we still are in the middle of the uh, religious tradition of Ramadan, you which know, doesn't end until April 9th. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe we've got they were a few, allowed to uh, break fast. Practicing people allowed to break their fast as the sun set. You, That's, you are, that would be my you, best guess, Larry. You are exactly exactly right because I know that there are several players on the uh, Kalaji Pro Profile squad that are uh, practicing Muslim. So yeah, that would it would allow them to to break fast. Well, and you've got to imagine that's an enormous difference competitively that. You're allowed. You love to see the. Uh, and that's. And I just got word. That's exactly what it was. There we go. That's that uh, you do. You just love to see the, the inclusion of practices like that, just allowing, uh, for people to represent themselves in the way that they choose. And, I mean, goodness, it, not being able to, eat, having that fast all the way through. It's just so difficult to work up the energy you need, to play for 90 minutes. That will certainly be a boost, for those. Especially on this holiday weekend. That's right. Absolutely correct. So for that reason, we were given a little hydration break, as it were. And we return to play. Again, 1-0 is the Kalangji Pro Profile lead over Georgia Athletic. And maybe just a chance for Georgia Athletic to regroup a bit. It's hard to say that They've disappointed. I don't think it's been necessarily poor football from them. Again, I, we talked about it about 10 minutes in. I would say the same thing now close to 25 into this match. It hasn't been a whole lot of mistakes particularly. No individual errors. But at the same time, maybe missing that X factor that would make them feel a little bit more involved in this one. Meanwhile, here come Kalangji. A shot blocked. Certainly had some poise and promise going forward. Throw in to go. And the question to ask is with this Kalanchi Pro Profile veteran squad, are they going to be able to contain the, you know, maintain the pace for 90 minutes? That will be a question to watch out for. Again, Kalanji have not quite reached the heights, but their traditional history would make them expect in the past couple of seasons, they have not quite found the league scorching title winning seasons that they would hope for. We're going to come back all the way to the defensive half of the pitch for the boys in pink. They have won a free kick back there. No advantage was playable. See right there, back. just yep. a foul. Oh, well. Right. Called back. Advantage was played, but it was played to nowhere. So Mary Fernandez electing to pull it back. Yeah, good refereeing in that case. Good use of the advantage rule. Nazario and Bomeo was the one to hopefully play a ball forward. 
This one's out of touch and a throw in for Kalanji Pro Profile. Well, we'll see those couple of minutes allowing for the uh, break of the Ramadan fast added to the end of the first half. But aside from those, we've got about 20 minutes to play before halftime comes upon us. Well, the one goal in it for now. Well, that was a challenge right in front of the Georgia Athletic Bench, and they saw it pretty plainly, wanted a foul, looked clean, and the referee crew agreed over there of the AR and center referee Mary Fernandez in the vicinity to try and adjudicate. Well, Anthony Sumo picks it up, played it in the area of three or four guys in white, and not one of them was in the right position to take it, but they've won it back here, a shot on goal. It's a nice save off the foot, but the rebound will drop, and it's two. Kalanji double their lead. They just kept on coming, and it's finally put away. All of a sudden, pro profile in full control in Georgia Athletic are really. You see here, just moving up that left-hand side, shot taken, saved, but didn't clear it out in time, and it's an easily put away for the two nil lead. Yeah, that one's one of the more simple finishes that you'll see all evening long. And Kalanji will be more than happy to claim it. Two nil, hard to fault the goalkeeper because that first effort was a point blank chance. I think he's done pretty well, Daniel Delgado, just to stop the first one, but didn't have a whole lot of help on attempt number two. And now it's goal number two as a result. Kalanji in control. Larry, if you're the man at the helm of the guys in pink out there, I mean, you've surely got work to do. How do you start to kind of chip away at this advantage that the other team has built up? Well, we've seen, I've seen a couple matches so far of Georgia Athletics so far in this spring. Again, the Community Cup against Dalton and then the match last week with SSL. They have the pieces to, to get a positive result. They just need to stay on task, don't lose their, their thought with this result so far. Continue to do your job, own your space, and move the ball forward positively, and hopefully you can get a result. Well, it would appear they're listening although they won't get the benefit of a foul in that area of the pitch. They're starting to exploit space just as you were saying the words, Larry. Now they're going to have to get back and defend. Kalangji, one of the more potent attacking sides that are out there anywhere in UPSL. Well, the key is a Kalanji pro profile in the UPSL Georgia Conference, a lot like Atlanta United. They bring a lot to the pitch with their name alone. And that's hard for some of these younger clubs to come in because you're battling two things. You're battling the name and you're battling the player. So you got to focus on what matters most right now, battling the player. And I think there's something about having traveled around the world like some of these guys have on professional contracts in more than a few instances. Being able to play against some of the best and brightest across the globe it just gives you maybe a sense of calm, a sense of uh, maybe a little more simplicity to these local matches that can give you a bit of a mental edge, I feel. Yeah, a lot of these Kalanji Pro Profile players have had opportunities in the Germany operations over there in the lower leagues in Germany. Uh, like you said, Tiente. He had a stint in the twos. The biggest name of all being Kareem Tamimi, still over with the twos. Yellow card yeah, issued. A, a solid source of goals, Tamimi, a season ago. And right you are, Larry. We see the first disciplinary action of the evening. Mary Fernandez shows plastic. It's a yellow card. Issued to the visitors, already down two goals to nil. Things just continuing to trend in the direction they would not like them to. 
in at 31 and not much going their way early on. So from this free kick, everybody forward, and it's a great delivery off the post. Kareen's back in. It's another bar. Twice off the woodwork, and it's still 2 0. This one spilled, and can it finally be cleared away? Yes, it can. Bombio got himself there, and then just booted long, chasing it down Munoz. Munoz is bodied off the ball and cleared away now at long last by Henry Platas. Going back to that previous chance for Kalonji, they're so unlucky not to have a third. Georgia Athletic had to really dig deep not to give away the third goal of the contest. And you see the anger from Georgia Athletic's keeper to the AR. He felt like there was a foul there. Let's take a look at the replay. We'll see it again. Ball came in, back post. Well, I mean, there, yeah, and you know, I think he was looking for offside. I yeah, think he's, he's got a really good case, to be honest with you. Yeah, he surely comes from behind. Yeah, it looks like Grant Carr was offsides when he was standing right oh. there in front of the keeper. Yeah, I think he's got a really good argument. That would have been quite a controversial piece of action had the goal found its way in the back of the net. Of course, it didn't, thanks to a couple of unsavory bounces off the bar. And we enter minute 33, still sitting at a 2-0 scoreline which is also a scoreline we saw towards the end of the first half in our previous match. It was the visitors leading in that instance. And they ended up taking that one 6-1. Here's a shot in the other direction, forcing a sprawling save out of a thankful man in goal at the moment. Well, let's have another look. Not the place you want to give the ball away. Munoz picks it up. And a shot from distance. Yeah, sure did require a save. And the save was made by Platonis. Again, ball given away. Georgia Athletic putting a lot of resources and energy into winning the ball back. They've done so on this occasion. Can they get a goal to show for it? Determined touches, and the run forward was stopped in its tracks. Bomio had eyes for goal. Couldn't get his shot away. Marquez plays it through. Space there for Ferrer. He'll go through. Bomio was again the target, and again, he is unable to get there in time. 10 plus to play, and there are still stoppages to be atoned for in the stoppage time edition. Kalangji continuing to search. Goal number three would really put them in a good position. We won't find it for now. Still looking. Testing, probing down this left wing. George's football interrupted by a challenge and an illegal one in the eyes of Mary Fernandez. We will see a free kick, and is there a card to come as well? Yes, there is. I, you know, I think that's for descent, Larry, looking from here. I have to definitely agree. That was definitely dissent. You see here on this foul, just steps in, pushes him over, and it and it's coming more from the, and it wasn't even, number eight wasn't the player that was even a part of it. He gets the dissent yellow card. Yeah, 
That's right. It's Martin Gutierrez, the number two, who picked up the foul, and it was a foul, the right decision. Looking at the second viewing, and Alexis Ferrer, the captain, well, it's not the type of contribution you want your captain to make. Meanwhile, a spill and cleared off the line, heroic defending. We really should be looking at a 3-0 scoreline. Yeah, that's a nightmare for the keeper there. This free kick just about the same spot as the last one, lifted in and just gets that completely wrong. Luckily, yeah, his defense there to, to clear it out for him. A misjudgment, monumentally so. Well, and Gutierrez makes up for the foul in about the biggest way that a center back can, clears one off the line. And as they say, it's as good as a goal at the other end. That was surely, surely destined to yeah, be goal number three, and it isn't. And it is the man, number three, who did have that save, who was down on the ground. Maybe yeah, just William kind of Marquez. overextended himself. That's right. Marquez, the man who made that goal line clearance in the end, and he was the one who took a bit of a knock in the process. Of course, it was a fairly acrobatic move to get himself in that position. Siente backwards. Momentary touch for Irving. All the way back to Platis. We'll play it long. Chupa. Joseph Samuel. Out to the left. Irving for Dafma. Samuel once again, dispossessed. Not the best of touches, but he comes back and intercepts. Awego Kalongji, shot out of a cannon as he runs up this right side. Chuma, it's with him again after the give and go from Suma. Cross into the center. Still potential danger, but it falls to Athletic. They are able to clear. Along the sideline, it does not on that sideline in front of us. That's what we talk about, throwing. Danny. You're just trying to transition too quickly. That's right. And for Georgia Athletic, they've got to be a bit more intentional, deliberate with their breaks. They've got to make them count because they know Kalonji will have the lion's share of the attacking possession and most likely the shots in total. Athletic will have to just be that little bit more careful. Less of a margin for error, you feel. Moving through midfield with plenty of pace. Chuma thought about the shot. Let it go. He'll play it forward. And could a shot come in from Sumo? Excellent defending. Sumo couldn't get the shot away because he had it dispossessed before he could wind up. Meanwhile, player goes down in pink. No foul, but they keep possession here near midfield. More contact. More apathy from the center referee. And he was yeah. just yellow carded. Number eight, is this a, is this? It's another yellow. If it's his second, this, he's is gone. Is this red? It's, well, it would seem that way. And that's the captain again, and now he's gonna make things worse for himself. Yeah, I think I think uh, Georgia Athletic could, could be seeing themselves down a man. Let's see if it is acknowledged by Mary Fernandez because it did seem like Ferrer had picked up that yellow for descent earlier on, and he's definitely the one who made contact here. It, it was a nasty foul. I think it's really the type of foul that has potential to be a red all on its own. I still haven't seen a, a red produced, though. And it could be that that previous yellow was it not issued to him as the captain. He was... He was debating for his squad. Yeah, tough to tell. 
And I think if it would have been a second yellow situation, that second yellow would have been issued already. I, I think he will get off a little bit lucky this time. Yosef Samuel, in the meantime, is the unlucky man here as he was the one taken down. I'd like to see maybe another view as well of the challenge, this most recent one. It was a firm one, Larry, to say the least. A lot of contact in that one, and to me it seemed pretty high. I'd just like to see where the studs happened to be in the challenge. Yeah, it definitely looked like Mary was right there to see it. And you can see Yosef coming off of the pitch without his boot on. Well, yeah, and Yosef Samuel was not happy, even as Ferrer came over to apologize. He didn't like that apology. He had to be held back a bit. And... Uh, Coerced to think better of a potential altercation. Well, if uh, Ferrer was not on the yellow card already, he very confidently is now. 100% agree. Plastic I is think put it's back in the pocket. I think in total, it's is it two or three yellow cards already three. given to Athletic? It's, I was going to say, I, I think it was three by my count. Whoever they happen to be. Because, again, we thought it was Ferrer who was already on a yellow. And, of course, no video assistant referee is a reminder in UPSL. Something that Football well, fans have gotten well. accustomed to seeing. Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm with you. It's uh, one of those things that is still refreshing to see in the lower divisions of American football and around different divisions below the professional ranks where you still don't see the video referee. There's a lot of controversy that comes with it, isn't there? Definitely so. You see it in a lot of the lower leagues in the U.K. still. No VAR. Also, during some of those early rounds of the FA Cup. That's right. Same in the U.S. Open Cup, actually. Yeah. Here's a shot from distance for Athletic. Well, you might as well try your luck in a match where you're down two and all the momentum is being pushed in the opposite direction. That time a little bit high, but uh, you could tell with some of those shots, just the power that gets behind it out of nothing. That's the type of guy who's going to want to shoot more often than not. And we've seen over the years, Danny, where clubs that have the ability to make those long shouts count for them. You look at back years prior to a team such as Atlanta Elephants, they were able to make those 30, 40 yard shots regularly. Well, they Just were like that. Be reckoned with. Speaking of that, a forceful finish. And Georgia Athletic on the board in the biggest of ways. It's a one-goal game, and it's a golazo, no doubt about it. See it again. Just ripped by number eight. Absolutely gets that yellow card, and he puts it. He takes over this game, and he does it on his own. Yeah, you want to talk about an eventful first half for the captain. Alexis Ferrer with the armband. He is at quite a roller coaster of an evening so far. We're not even halfway through it yet. Ferrer with quite possibly the goal of the season for his team this early on. A laser. And he hit it from a good 20 yards of distance. Also put it from his right to left across the keeper's body. It was just absolutely nothing. Nothing that Henry Playtest was going to do there. 2-1. Game on. Just entering stoppage time, Danny. And you can still see here, you can still see right before that kickoff, Joseph Samuel still favoring that ankle. That's right. And remember, it was the strong challenge that was from Ferrer, earned him a yellow card here a couple moments ago that uh, caused the injury to Samuel. Joseph Samuel is out there again after he had to take a moment to collect himself and get treated, but 
Like you say, Larry, not quite himself yet. Sometimes it's one of those things you can just shake off. It's kind of a, a sting. But other times, it's a sign of something more serious. We certainly hope that's not the case. Time, in to, this bring out, time to bring out the magic spray. That's right. It can heal any wound, at least momentarily. This is a free kick belonging to Georgia Athletic, and it is Samuel who commits the foul this time. Just kind of held up Julio Batista. All right, so a free kick. Potential danger here. Luis Munoz, the striker, will be the man to play this one in. And lots of bodies to aim for. Everybody forward. Already a minute and a half into stoppage. There will be plenty more to play. Let's see what develops from this occasion. Ball comes in. There's players there. Still a potential for danger. Two straight crosses blocked. They want a handball. They will not get one. Victor Sous, I think, was out there, the left back, who we had wearing number four, and he's actually put on the number 66 shirt today. Yeah, that one being committed by Daphma, but he was outside of the box anyways if they would have called it, called it a handball. That's right. And, of course, again, there's no VAR, so even in a league where they're Happens to be VAR. That would not have been a reviewable play just simply because there's no potential penalty there. Well, you see the scoreboard not only on the score bug, but in the background for the moment. 2-1, the lead for Kalanji Pro Profile. They were much the better side and deserve their 2-0 advantage, but Georgia Athletic, to their credit, fought back. Yeah, well, a spectacular effort individually. Captain's contribution from Alexis Ferrer has this lead in half. And ever since, Athletic have looked a little bit more spry. Finally starting to build something in the attacking half. A bit more, a bit more uh, verve, you could say, in their attacking play. Into the fourth minute of stoppage, and I'm not sure exactly how much we'll get, but I would imagine at least four. We had about three just for the uh, opportunity for Ramadan observers on the pitch to break their fast. And it will, of course, be a minute or two more aside from that stoppage, just by virtue of the goals and yellow cards we've seen. Maybe a chance to cross from this left side area. No, that was smothered by Georgia Athletic, and they couldn't quite break out and go the other direction, but they certainly dealt with their defensive responsibilities. And they switch to play, and that was all. Seuss there, the left back, was able to get it. details done. Not much left to play, you imagine, in half number one. We'll let one goal advantage, nothing more. And, well, it was perhaps a chance for Mbomio to break. Couldn't quite escape the defensive units. But a ball played through for him. He is just a hair offside. And that's an agonizing one for him. That had to have been awfully close. And Bamio, a player that knows this Kalancha Pro Profile Lee uh, team well, playing for Atlanta Rovers in, in the past. That's right, former team that was a member of this conference. And, well, the joint leaders of the conference will not be that way any longer if they can't turn things around. It's Georgia Athletic down two goals to one to the ever-powerful Kalangji Pro Profile. Two goals to one is the lead for the home side here in Snellville, Georgia. Second half is coming up, and you really feel the balance it will be decided in this result in the second half. All to play for in the second 45, so stick with us on the other side of this break. You're listening to the UPSL 
Georgia Conference Premier Division, Max Week 3 on ASMG TV. Hey coach, is your game going to be live streamed? Can't find a broadcast partner. I have the solution for you. It's time to contact the Atlantic Soccer Media Group. The Atlantic Soccer Media Group will provide you with the most extensive live coverage and affordable rates to bring your club's matches to your fans. So they will never miss any of the action It's in! Dalton United at the death of the game! They go ahead, and this stadium is sent to raptures! And bring them along with you as you raise the trophy. Gentlemen, say it with them. 
They are the champions. So what are you waiting for? For the best and easiest coverage, national exposure, attract sponsors, interact with your fans, work with scouts from around the world, contact the Atlantic Soccer... Hey coach, is your game going to be live streamed? Can't find a broadcast partner. I have the solution for you. that Kalangji Pro Profile had taken full control Georgia Athletic FC with a banger from Alexis Ferrer have themselves right back in this one on the stroke of halftime Ferrer's finish from long distance cut this lead in half Danny Cthulhu joined by Larry Weaver for halftime coverage we are just about set Larry for the second half and Georgia Athletic here at Charlie Jordan Field in Snellville Georgia 
they'll feel mighty fine about the fact that it's only a one goal deficit. Kalanji had a great first half. Kalanji definitely right back to what we're so used to seeing them with these veterans. But with Georgia Athletic, they're not out of this fight just yet. They're, they're giving their best. We'll see what happens here in the second 45. As a reminder, if you weren't with us in the first half, it is Kalanji, the home side here at Shiloh High School, in their all-white outfit. They've got black numbers on the backs of those shirts. In the all-pink is Georgia Athletic. Not a common color, but maybe I shouldn't say that because the away team just in our earlier game of the doubleheader also sported pink. So clearly it's common enough. For it to be the most common color of the day. It's also just coming to the end of family night. Some festivities going on down there. Pitch side, some halftime show shenanigans going on. And also some food concessions around Shiloh Park. Shiloh High School, I should say. The football stadium, Charlie Jordan Field. And here in Snellville, we are underway for half number two. Kalungji. Pro Profile kicked the second half off. And Georgia Athletic with a really promising move. A shot from this left side. Well, it forces a save and an immediate chance. Well, maybe it wasn't touched. Uh, it looks like it'll be a goal kick in the end. Apologies for that. But you'll get a chance to see it again. Georgia Athletic immediately on the front foot. First thing you should do is come out and put a presence and it's exactly what Georgia Athletic did. Shot taken, goes over the bar. It's out for a goal kick. Making their mark within 30 seconds. That is certainly what the doctor ordered. Again, 2-1 is the current score line. It is certainly conceivable that Georgia Athletic makes their way back. If you didn't hear it in the open, they are joint leaders in the league, only second going into the weekend to Potros FC on goal differential. And now with their uh, win earlier tonight, Dalton United were able to surpass them, having played one extra match. They won 5-1 earlier on today over Legends FC. Solid result for them. And with the goal differential they earned, they put themselves just a shade in front of Georgia Athletic as well. So the live table with this result holding and other results we already know going the way that they're going. It would be still Potros in first. You need to have Dalton in second, followed by Georgia Athletic. Potros still have a game to play this weekend as well. Well, they've already played it, I guess you should say. But uh, Larry, as far as I understand, we don't have that result in yet. Have not heard anything from Montgomery, Alabama as yet. So we're still waiting to get the result for Potros and UMA. Any sort of positive result for Potros would keep them in first place. If they were to lose, they could theoretically drop based on goal differential. Tight race, though, at the top. Of course, it's very early. That's how it tends to go. I can also tell you Atlanta City currently leading their match 2-0 over FC Birmingham. Only Alabama representative in what, of course, is primarily a Georgia-affiliated division. Georgia Athletic with a win. And the right result in that Potros match could jump to number one in the table. Again, they entered at number two and currently sit third. Kalangji would just like to put themselves back in the title mix. Of course, everyone really still mathematically in the title race at this stage. Kalangji sitting mid-table coming into this contest. If the win holds, it would certainly help their pursuit of their first regular season title in a while. They currently sit right on the edge of playoff qualification. And this is a good move sent out to the right. The cross will come in, and it is defended well. It was... Good link-up play there in midfield from Chupa. Liam Chupa Kamdem, midfielder for Kalanji Pro Profile today. 
Reminder, three separate players going into halftime were on bookings already for Georgia Athletic. They will have to be a bit more careful for as long as they are used in the second half. Well, can we see another one? Georgia Athletic are furious. Certainly looked like a foul to me. We'll have to see the replay to be sure. But it won't matter much. Mary Fernandez has made her decision already. Let's see it again, Larry. Take a look at this as Kalanji trying to move the ball forward. Good ball from Tony Tiente, give and go. And just, it's soft on Tiente, but a foul nonetheless. Tough to get the benefit of the doubt as a defender. And I know because I've made these sorts of challenges many a time. Coming from the side or behind somebody, any sort of contact is just that much more likely to be whistled. Tony Tiente will be the one to take the free kick. 30 yards out from goal, something like that. And it's about head on. He could shoot from here. He will. He will careen it off the wall. Follow-up is blocked again. And Kalonji will maybe try and cross one in this time. They do. Space out there on the right side off the deflection. And a free kick this time goes the way of the visitors. Equally merited, I think. Definitely so. You could see Daphna feeling like he wasn't in the wrong in that challenge. You see here coming in, just puts a boot on the player. Again, another no harm foul, but a foul nonetheless. That's like right. Like you were saying, Danny, here's a look at the updated table. Yeah, that is that is the current table with games that are still to be completed. Not updated quite yet, but with the handful of matches that we already have final scores on, having been placed in, as you see, it's Dalton up there with Potro still around and drowning at the top three for now is George Athletic. You also could see Kalangi over there. With the three points that they currently hold over Georgia Athletic, they would make quite the climb. And, well, climbing a little too high was that opportunity. Not a bad effort from Kalonji from that distance. Maybe not the right shot selection, you could say. would be the only real criticism you could put on that shot. The uh, effort itself was solid. And this is a unique position for Georgia Athletic. In the fall, their inaugural season, they had only one draw with the rest wins in that solid, solid result, making their way up here to the Premier Division. Yeah, it was a pretty resounding, deserved ascension from Division One up to their now promoted Premier League status. And well, sometimes survival is enough even for teams that really succeed in Division One, But this side would like to go further, and this would help. It is just going to fall wide. A huge, huge save off the hand of Henry Pletes, the goalkeeper for Kalangi. I think it needed a defensive intervention even beyond that. It's out for a corner. A fantastic chance by Mbamio. We'll take a look at it here in a few moments after this corner. What might it bring? Julio Batista, the man to supply the service. And it goes a little bit overcooked to the back post and probably not the headed chance they were hoping for. See the shot again. Yeah, it's a nice block, and yeah, sure did. Had to be cleared away off the line as well. Yeah, Grant Carr with a fantastic save for Kalanji to keep that out of the back of the net. Uh, really would have changed the dynamic of this second half and how it progresses. Of course, still more changes to come. Georgia Athletic with the two wins from two so far, despite this being their first season ever participating in the top tier of UPSL Georgia. They have dared to dream big early on. And a positive result here against, I think, easily the toughest opponent they've faced 
early on in this season would really prove that these first couple of matches have not been a fluke. Some stoppage to play here. Looks like it might have been a foul over there by the sideline. Couldn't quite tell if it was a foul and a free kick or a throw in, but I think they have gone with a free kick. Yeah, that was a bang bang play there and electing to do free kick. A lot happening there. Short free kick. The shot is deflected. And it took a touch last. But you're starting to see it already, food. Danny. You're starting to see Georgia Athletic with a little bit more pace than Kalanji. Yeah, just a little bit more energy maybe from them at the moment. So I think what actually happened is this one didn't even reach the goal line. It was so far wide that it's a Kalanji throw in. Georgia Athletic right back on the ball. And it's through off of a defensive header. It's curled wide. Hooked to the left, and that was a gold and equalizer chance. Just did not fall the way that Nazario and Bomeo wanted it to. Ooh, he is going to yeah. rue that one, I think. This is one that Mbomeo wants back. Great work by Georgia Athletic to find this ball. And that one just pulled wide. Well, KB Marin was just behind him. He was a halftime substitute, and I think he would have liked the back heel supplied to him. He had a hand coming up from Luis Munoz to his left as well. He had options. Really not convinced that there was a better decision than to hit it. He just needed to hit it with more accuracy, Larry. Didn't quite work out for him. And at 56, a lot of football still to play. It is 2-1 for now. The home side ahead. Georgia Athletic, for their part, were not the better side in the first half. Maybe lucky to even keep it to a one-goal advantage. But here in this second half, they have been the more creative and the quicker side to get out of the gate. They're going to need a goal at some point. Sooner rather than later would be the goal, of course. Georgia Athletic on the sideline are starting to lose patience with the center referee. They've felt a lot of decisions have gone against them. And this one, in a literal sense, will. It'll be a free kick for Kalanji. Nearing an hour gone in this one. Georgia Athletic will just have to try and fend the flame of this momentum they have built up. They can keep it going. I feel really good about being able to grab a second goal. And, well, this will be a foul, a free kick. They'll go quickly. A foul committed by Sumo. Just tried to use his body. Caught for a foul. Anthony Sumo, the winger. Prolific player in the attack. Not the best of tackles, though, defensively from him. Georgia decided to go quickly. This ball played through. Will it fall kindly? Just a little bit too long for Mbomeo. And Danny, Georgia Athletic staff just making their case to the fourth official for these last few moments. Captain yeah, speaking to line. center official, but still... No foul there. Yeah, no foul called there, but you're right, Larry. It was a storyline of the first half as the 45 minutes wore on. That coaching staff for Georgia Athletic just continued to get more and more frustrated, more visibly and audibly so as well. And, well, maybe they'll have to voice their frustrations on the far side because right in front of the AR there, no foul given. They would have liked one. And now a foul given against them. So... Maybe As the storyline continues. The emotions are starting to pick up. And you can see, and, and it's it's a fine line between a foul and a card. And you got to be, you got to play it. George Athletic, they're known to play with their hearts on their sleeve. Well, Larry, you got to keep in mind that 
if Georgia Athletic are to get themselves in a card fest, that would be a lot more positive as a situation for their opponents. Kalangji have yet to be carded, to my knowledge, and Georgia Athletic have already accrued three yellows. So that's three guys out there on the pitch that have to be a decent amount more careful. A second yellow or any other sort of sending off would really, really affect this game. And not in the way that the visitors would like. How about this tricky dribbling, though, from the left wing? Chance to play it square. Beautiful ball to advance for Batista. Batista sticks with it. You thought he could maybe go for gold from there. Instead, tried the unselfish pass. And Bomeo never received it. Putting it right back off of the header. And this one just booted forward. Batista tries one from distance. It's blocked immediately. Athletic continuing to climb and to create the clawing away. And they are still short a goal. On this left wing, will they find any luck? That played into the center. Batista again. Julio Batista lines one. Oh, man. Lasers it over the bar. It is a goal kick, nothing more. Take another look. look at this, Danny. Working into the middle of the pitch. Shot taken, and that one just a little too much on it. Now, you see the idea, and he's not the only guy who can hit it from that distance. Of course, we saw one earlier from his central midfield counterpart, Alexis Ferrer. I mean, these guys can really launch them at goal, and you made a comparison to a team a few seasons ago who were never quite able to make it out of the division and make it to nationals, but they were always a threat, always dangerous. Atlanta Elephants, a, a team with mostly Ivorian roots from Ivory Coast, with Ivoire, the African country, and, and they were just a fun team to watch. They played great football, and like you said, Larry, in the first half, they could really just hit the ball, and it just kind of made a defense think about something else. There was another dynamic to defending those guys, and it created a lot of chances for them. Scored a lot of goals. It's uh, one of many teams that I personally miss seeing from years ago. Uh, FC Matata we mentioned previously. It's another team that had a lot of success. So it's a quite, it hasn't quite felt right not having some of those perennial powers in the league. Of course, the replacements have been excellent. And the level is higher than it ever has been. And this is a great cross in. Oh, boy. That's the exact type of curve you want to put on a ball from that distance. And, well, a corner is all they've got to show for it. But the corner could yet yield something. You see here, a beautiful ball in and had to be cleared by Kamani Irving. And he had to get it right. Yeah, despite the 2-1 lead and maybe the bulk of the chances going to Kalangji's attacking forces, those center backs have been busy. And a shot is just over the bar. That's one of the closest chances we've had from that distance. Amani Irving and Abrima Dafma, those two center backs who have had a lot of work to do. Grant Carr and Alhaji Tambadu haven't exactly been bored either. And that was a good idea by Georgia Athletic. So instead of playing into the box, play it to the on runner. Unfortunately, he can't get it on frame. And that one's blasted over the bar. Yeah, so much power behind it. Less than half an hour left. And we are none the wiser as far as who takes home. Which result in this one? For now, it's Kalangji 2, Georgia Athletic 1. And Athletic have looked the more likely of the two to grab the next goal in this match. And you do feel there's at least one more in it. Those things can be hard to tell, of course. But both teams have the emphasis. The emphasis. The quality. Looks like a foul it is. Right there in front of the Georgia Athletic bench as well. Certainly won't draw any pleasantries. Again, somebody that knows how to use their body so well. Anthony Sumo working down that right line. 
and just a little bit of a nip in his ankle, and he goes down. Yeah, clever move, nice positioning. Putting his body in the way. And as a direct result, free kick coming for Kalangji. Could it be beneficial? Two goals to one lead already. Could Kalangji extend it? Restore a two goal advantage they haven't had since very early in this first half. Directly into the box. Some chaotic bounces around there. And who did it touch last? They will say it's a corner to Kalangji. Bounced off of the defender and then up off of the American football line. In zooming corner. Near post, and the header is a little bit over. Not the worst of ideas from Mamadou Jallo, but he could not keep his header down. Running to grab the goal kick is the goalkeeper, Daniel Delgado. Busy first half for him, conceded twice, of course. Was visibly frustrated with his back line on many more occasions. In this half, he hasn't had quite too much to stress him out. It's, of course, a good thing for his team. Now we'll get a throw in in the attacking half, Will George Athletic. Clever turn. Well defended. What's next here in midfield? Lots of players around the ball. Athletic hold on to possession for now. Continuing to stream forward. Creative cross into the box. But Kalangji are able to show the necessary aptitude to deal with it. Athletic will come right back. Down this left flank, so much pace. Cross comes in, it's a nice little back cut to the back post. Too long for a shot on goal, but still in possession. Bomio, Bomio along the goal line, way too much. That touch got away from him. And, well, we can give you the update that it was a final score to UMA. They were able to win 2-0 against Potros FC, if I'm not mistaken there. That's a final score, and so Potros Massive FC are not going to take there, advantage. Yeah, it is. There is. So Potros unable to take advantage and take the top spot. It's their first drop points of the year. Big time to drop them early on. So if I'm not mistaken, that puts Dalton United ahead in the live table. But there's six points in the big goal differential advantage. They go from negative two to, what, plus three? And that's enough to put them ahead. And as it stands, it'd be Potros there in second. And Georgia Athletic, as now we'll see Dafma, the center back for Kalangji, come off. And Larry, he didn't look particularly excited to take a seat. Not at all. Well, the player that has been the captain for Kalangji Pro Profile for some time. And then to come right back in a massive foul there on Grant Carr. Kalanji, I don't see a card issued to him. I, I'm honestly surprised about that, Larry. I, yeah. I think it's it's maybe been a a more fair refereeing uh, display than Georgia Athletic would be uh, keen to think, but that's maybe the first decision that I think is not quite right. It goes against Athletic, and, well, what have they ruled here? Uh, he took the ball out, so it'll be a, a throw. He, he just oh dribbled boy. that one right outside the line. But yeah, Tachi, that's... a player, Tachi Daphma, a player that's been the heart of the back line for Kalanchi Pro Profile for years, 
and then you have Kalanchi profile, profile go out of the line right again. Well, some strange moments on the ball. And what have we got here? It, is, it looks like a high kick, actually, uh, an indirect free kick. Correct. All right, well, this is strange. Things continue. We'll go to a George Athletic free kick on an uncommonly ruled high kick. In comes this one. Well, for an indirect free kick, that's definitely not the direction you want to go with it. Yeah, that one was sent all the way to Littleburn. That one had, <laughs> had no accuracy whatsoever. It was just hit. You know, still far away from me up in Satali, I can tell you that. No free kick is reaching where I'm at. And I wouldn't be surprised if North Georgia United from the earlier match are still traveling back to Calhoun, which is even further north from me. And of course, it's uh, even worse to have to travel a long distance when you have to think about a poor result. They lost, what, 6-1 in that one? When all was said and done, and I think that certainly qualifies as a poor result. Indeed. For Georgia Athletic, just coming across the city, uh, they they play out of Grayson. Not too long of a trek. Of course, anything can be a long and painful trek in the Atlanta area. Depends on if uh, traffic decides to be merciful. It seldom does. G dot for the win. <laughs> Now, if this were a podcast, I'd start talking about how much I wish we had an extinction of MARTA up in Cobb County and other places, but it's not. I'll hold those thoughts. We do have a podcast, by the way, on UPSL Georgia. It's uh, a production of Atlantic Soccer Media Group. And subscribe to ASMG on YouTube. There's conversations with coaches during the week from various teams and the aforementioned podcast, which we try to make a weekly occurrence. Center Circle, the name of that one. Various personalities and voices that make up ASMG are involved, and it's talking everything UPSL Georgia. And, well, if it turns out to be a tight one at the end, we may be talking about that very challenge, a spilled shot really could have been goal number three and you're going to see at the very end of this replay a huge clearance off the line that maybe won't get talked about enough good shot from jallo and then that clearance right there larry that's crucial very crucial and and it's also very dangerous coming through the player like he did right in the box would have been a penalty had he got it mistimed but instead, a goal kick after all of that. So he actually got it to go off of Kalanji in the process. Big moment for George Athletic. And if I could give you a little plug for our set pieces interview podcast, we're going to have an opportunity to speak to the commissioner of the UPSL, Jan Squire, very soon. Always a great conversation. With Jan, he has been part of this league in that commissioner role for years and years, ever since I started becoming involved. And that was post-COVID. Been an important part of all this growth that the league has seen for so long. Always loves getting the chance to talk to us. And, of course, that feeling is mutual. Set Pieces, the name of the series, with various coaches, League officials and center circle is more of a recap preview show going through all the results and upcoming fixtures of the wow. league. Again, you can subscribe to ASMG on YouTube and catch every single one of those pieces of content. Yeah. Center circle allows us as pundits to kind of give our opinions a little bit more than what we would normally see. You never know. You could hear me talk about Marta, and we will see a change. 
for Georgia Athletic. And coming off, we saw, was the number six, Julio Batista. In central midfield, he is replaced by, well, a fellow midfielder, mostly a like-for-like -like substitution, I think. Santiago Arias is the one who's in. Interesting to see exactly where he slots into the lineup. I think he's, yeah, come one for one right there in central midfield to replace Batista. Just some fresh legs. Batista could certainly hit it from distance. And I we'll also think it. that that takes That's a yellow card off the board. That's right. That sure does. And that will factor into the decision as well, you assume. Because yeah, I feel like if, and there's a foul committed there, and I think we're going to get a yellow card right back. Oh, it's the second, second yellow, one. Larry, on Ferrer. And again, go back to that first yellow card that he picked up in the first half. He was lucky it wasn't anything more this time. No such luck. And I really think he's unlucky that this is a yellow. So, I mean, goes around, comes around, I guess, in the league and in the match. Well, Ferrer. Got off a little bit lucky with the first yellow, and for me, probably a bit unlucky to pick this second yellow up. I'd like to see it again if we get a chance, but, I mean, that's that's just a harsh way to have to leave the pitch. Huge change, though, now, because you see it reflected on the score bug. Galanchi not only up a goal, they are up a man for the rest of this match. Let's see if we have it on this one. Where's this before? There's I think it comes right yep. there. It comes from there behind. Yeah, I think maybe behind. the positioning. It's I, I, just enough. I think what hurts him, I think what hurts Ferrer that time is he is not really playing the ball because he's coming completely from behind the player, and he's never really going to win the ball in that instance. It, and, and, not and a yellow saw, card. You can't make that tackle. And you saw Mary show that it was, a, it was an accumulation of fouls. Mm. And I was just going to say, Danny, that we're just entering into what is now the 77th minute. You would think if Georgia Athletic had some sort of a result of a goal in the next five minutes, they really were feeling the confidence that they could maybe see this out with a winner. That's right. And now all of a sudden, well, that source of confidence. A draw. Yeah, not, not quite what it was. I think they'd be very content, like you said, just to grab one goal back and try to earn something out of this. Well, it's turning into a day in which all the league leaders squander chances to go out in front. At the moment, Dalton United are the ones who stand to benefit. Kalangji very much so as well. If things hold here, their two clubs who will just astronomically rise up the ranks and and it will really open up this table for anybody to take control over the next few match days. What we love to see is neutrals, but if you're Georgia Athletic, man, it will feel like an opportunity that slipped away against one of the best teams in the league. But of course, we've still got 13 minutes plus before we start seeing any of that with any certainty. Despite the man advantage and the goal advantage, certainly nothing set in stone for Kalungji Pro Profile here at home. They will need to lock in and make sure they take all three points. It would be a devastating blow to uh, finish with anything less tonight. Well, that won't help. Bad giveaway, 3v1 if they do it right. Great play out to the left. A shot could come in from here, putting the goalkeeper out of the equation. Pass back, he's still not back in his goal. A shot is going to beat everybody. It's off the post. Kareen's back into play and cleared off the line. That is absolutely heartbreaking for Georgia Athletic. What an attempt from a crazy distance and somehow, some way, it just doesn't bounce quite right for him. And look at this, Danny. He has everything he needs. He just has to get it on frame right off the post. But you have to almost look at also, Grant Carr had his arm up and he's lucky he didn't get a touch on that because then that would have been a penalty. That's right. Well, goodness, it's been a hectic, hectic evening. And so hard to separate these two. For now, Kalangji lead 2-1 over Georgia Athletic. You have the red card represented there in the top left of your screen. That came just a few moments ago, about two or three minutes back. It's the captain as well, Alexis Ferrer. And, well, if you thought the red card couldn't get any worse, he's also their only goal scorer of the evening. In the meantime, 
Couple of changes for Kalongji, both attacking-minded players coming off. Yosef Samuel leaves, and remember, he picked up a bit of an injury in the first half. Mamadou Jallo, the sole number nine in the lineup today, also leaves. We can also give you another score update from another match down in McDonough. Georgia Revolution leading 3-1 over FC Atlanta, the reigning league champions. This is a foul towards the corner flag and maybe embellished a bit, but certainly the right decision. Although Kalangji will argue it. That is a final score, by the way, from Southern Atlanta Metro over there in Henry County. Georgia Revolution wins that one 3-1 again against FC Atlanta. That puts the Revs in a good position. And off your screen, a yellow card has been issued to Kaimani Irving after his foul over there in the corner. And you see still kind of sprawled out on the ground, Luis Munoz trying to shake off that challenge. Well, I mean, when you're a goal down, a set piece Larry can really be a neutralizer. And if they're going to have an opportunity to pull one back, this feels like maybe the most golden of any of them over these final 10 minutes. Indeed, this is one of those moments where you can change the whole structure of this match in a blink of an eye. If you could just get it on frame, have somebody get open, put it into the net, everything changes. Could really be a mood deflator here in Snellville. Cross comes in. There's players there, and the goal is there too. We're level. Deuces on both sides. What a storyline. It's a Bumio. He's had a frustrating afternoon, just hasn't found the goal he's been looking for. Not any longer. We are level at two, Larry. Take I mean, we talked this. about it. This was the chance. They put it right on the near post. Mbamio gets there and just directs it. It bounces off Kamani Irving into the back of the net. It is now 2-2. Now it almost looks like, did Irving get the last touch on that? Is that officially going to go down as an own goal? It was tough to tell. It's probably going to go down as an own goal, even though Mbamio wants to take that. You know, he's going to try to say that it's all him. But I think that that could easily go down as an own goal. Yeah, that'll be interesting to see exactly how they rule it. Because actually, I think the original touch directly off the corner, or not the corner, but the free kick, I should say. If I'm not mistaken, it came from KB Martin, the substitute number 10. And I thought it was Zimbalmio that had deflected it in. It might have reflected off of Irving directly instead. Either way, it is two apiece and not a good sight as Luis Munoz is hobbled and needs help getting off the pitch. It'll help George Athletic in the sense that they would love to let this clock run out as long as possible. They would like to hold on to this 2-2 result being a man down, but I mean, that is not a guy you want to lose. They want to take an opportunity to say thank you to our sponsors who help make these ASMG TV broadcasts possible and bring them to you. Ballistic, primary sponsor for the season. So I want to say thank you to non-pro soccer. We've seen graphics across the day using their platform for live tables and results, max fixtures, goal scores, things of that nature, and images frozen in time providing all official photography services for the UPSL Georgia Premier and Division One divisions as they have since the beginning of their partnership all the way back years and years ago. Thank you to all of those and many more who help us bring you these live broadcasts and well matches like this or why we do it. It is level at two. The Longview Pro Profile, those with good memories will recall, they led 2-0 in this one. And well, Georgia Athletic have clawed their way back. They'll make another change. And they are going to use the full extent of their bank you imagine in pursuit of making sure they hold on to this result have fresh legs out there 
And of course, substitutions just take those precious seconds off the board as well. I'm not sure exactly who's come in and out quite yet. The clearance is blocked. Martin Gutierrez was trying to clear it, and he had to just get rid of it because they throw in for Kalangji. And it looks like, for now, we're going to say it's Valmorre Kubijan who comes in, a defender. That would make a lot of sense for him to enter for Georgia Athletic at this stage. Again, tied at two, and Kalangji will be the one's most disappointed if the spoils are shared this evening. Not just because they've had the lead for so long, but also because they've had a man advantage for about 10 minutes too. None of it's going to matter if they can't find a third goal and win this one. They try to play advantage, and I think they'll come back to that original foul on Kalanji. That's correct there, Danny. And, you know, when I talked about everything would play in if Georgia Athletic could get a goal within that 80th minute that they could find themselves potentially on the winning side. Didn't anticipate the red card there, but right now it's Georgia Athletic that's on the front foot. That's right. And again, a reminder that solitary goal for Georgia Athletic really shakes up the early season table because Athletic would go from third or thereabouts up to first. That one point is what separates a lot of teams up there towards the top. They'd have seven. It would be enough to lead the league, not only tonight, but I think through the rest of the weekend as well. All the other teams who could have passed them have already played, and pretty much all of them have failed to pick up any points this weekend. It would also be the only team remaining, Georgia Athletic, I believe, who have yet to lose. There's a yellow card issued, it looks like, to the bench of Kalangji, what it seems like to me. Bruno Kalangji over there. I think they got a little extracurricular in that ball that went out of play a little bit of gamesmanship here with five minutes to go well and if you're Georgia Athletic you are more than happy to kind of stoke those sort of moments bring them out as much as possible just because they let you bleed off that clock and the quicker we can hit the final whistle the better for the visitors this evening that's how they'll feel about it at the same time though another set piece you never know Larry yeah, you can see the coach calling for a ball over the top. Might as well send it. And it comes. Not many pink shirts committed up there. They're, of course, down a man. And they're going to have to prioritize the defensive side of things. That much is understandable. So not a whole lot of bodies forward on either side because Kalangji are going to want to get the ball in. Immediately head the other direction. That's well over the goal line in the end. Goal kick, Kalangji, you want to go quickly. Maybe try and catch George Athletic out. Not many chances that Kalangji will have without really two backs of four defending. That's going to be their only priority in moments like this. And oh, it was spilled for a moment. Not the most convincing of goalkeeping but it's just enough for Delgado and he's on the ground. He requires treatment. That will again allow George Athletic to let some clock run. We'll see it again and I mean you don't want to assume that the injury is ingenuine but it's uh, certainly advantageous. See it one more time. Comes out and claims it. Well, he I mean, land a little very, awkwardly. He, he did. He did. And I, I think if he's the goalkeeper on the other side trying to keep the game going, I think he's a goalkeeper tough enough to play on. But at the same time, if you take contact and you're in that situation, I mean, you might as well take advantage. I think that's what's happened there, although you can never really say. How about this? A chance for Kalanji the other way. Delgado takes the injury off and makes another save. 
That's crucial from him, and it was not easy in the slightest. A yeah, player that Kalanji would like to take a strike, especially with his left foot, Anthony Sumo. Good ball on frame, just needed to be over just a touch. One of the interesting parts of when this lineup came out for Kalanji, they switched their wingers. Delgado comes out and claims it again. He has thrown his body all over the place, putting himself on the line to try and hold on to this result. But Kalanji has switched, inverted their wingers. Patrick Aconquo plays on the right, and Anthony Sumo has been on the left today, even though usually they're in different orders in that front three. That is putting both of them where their strong foot is. It's a good cross in. Oh, the bicycle! And it's wide. Well, that would have been some way to win it for Kalanji. And we've seen that before from the likes of Patrick Oconquo, but not from Anthony Sumo. He sure felt confident he could pull it off. And, well, he wasn't far away, was he? Sure would have been something. We hit 90 minutes. You would expect quite a bit of added time to be added on. I think something like three or four minutes at a minimum. We won't know the official number, or at least in most cases, we aren't made privy to that information. Sometimes we're surprised, but I don't think we will be this evening. It'll be up to the referees. We'll just have to see how long they give us. It'll be a tense few minutes, however long it is, for Georgia Athletic. That much is certain. Any attention for Kalanji, too. Ball comes in. Sumo. Still Sumo. Turns. Strikes. Good look. And it's wide. A goal kick to come for Georgia Athletic. He will take their sweet time in taking it. Well, it's the type of look that Sumo wants. Larry, you mentioned the last time, the type of player you want to get that look for Kalanji. He could not quite direct it on frame. Ball in the air, pinball, back and forth, a few headers. Who comes away with it? Athletics got it. Will they be a little bit bold and go for that third goal? Well, I think they were attempting to, but Kalanji won the ball right back. Sumo bypasses the midfield, switches play. Too many bounces. It is well away from the target. Georgia Athletic have it back. They can take the time again. Minute 92. Does Kalanji have anything left in the tank? Could Georgia Athletic shock us all and find goal number three? Being 2 0 down, it's a free kick. Advance it forward, let some more time run. The... And this is all Georgia Athletic wants. If they can get a draw, that'll put them at the top of the table with the loss to Potros. That's right. Potros losing today. And Dalton United, despite a big win, they're already sitting in a lower position due to their previous goal differential. They're only sitting at six points anyway. Long ball through. And there is space down here. Could Kalanji steal it right at the death? The cross comes in. Delgado is there first. He had to be, and he was. He's on the ground again. And, well, again, it's, it's beneficial, to say the least, for Georgia Athletic. I think he took just a tiny little touch from Kalanji as they were coming in to get that cross coming in. I mean, a good goalkeeper is going to go down and allow time to continue for as long as they can at any sort of touch like that. Meanwhile, could Georgia Athletic go the other direction? They may have one more chance. Well, that won't help. Yeah, and Bombio didn't long. get a good right touch on that one. No. Not at all, although you'd rather touch it wrong and put it too far away than too close in this sort of scenario. Definitely aired on the right side. Alonji have gotten forward in a hurry anyway. 94th minute, they'll have a chance at least 
with this continuation. That looked like the push, and it was. He didn't like it, but I, I'm not sure how much of a case he has to plead. Jerome Mzama is the one who's come on, by the way, for Kalanji. Where's the number 34? And anytime that elbow gets extended, you're going to get a call. That's right. Okay, 95th minute. Of course, you also have to love the fact that the the yellow card issued to the keeper for wasting time. Yeah, he was in that sort of territory over the past couple of restarts. And I think he probably deserves the yellow card there. He'll be plenty happy with it. It's still worthwhile for him if it allows some time to escape. That's a nice touch. And what could it produce? The ball comes through down this left side. And a huge challenge. Some extra contacts. There will be some drama to sort out here. As Kalangji tries to calm their players down. What will be the decision here? Because further up the pitch after the whistle, there was a hard challenge. I don't think we're going to get to that because there was a foul here. Ah, a little extra push. And it looked like it came in from uh, maybe Kubi John over there. So the player down up here is that actually that's Kubi John. And he took a foul that isn't going to be a foul because it was after the whistle. There had already been a foul in the buildup, Larry, and I believe that was the push on yeah, a Georgia Athletic player. So the ball yeah, should belong to Kalanji. Yeah, the push off onto Anthony Sumo is the foul that, that was called before the foul that was committed there at the end. Right, so no foul when I think there would have been against Kalanji further forward because all of that got invalidated. So a free kick for Kalanji. And we'll get a major break in that sense. And, well, they're just going to have a conversation about it. Center referee Mary Fernandez consulting with the fourth official. Also something we saw Larry in the first match between SSL and North Georgia United. This game, well, there's a whole lot more of the balance, isn't there? Yeah, a little bit of a word that's going to be said to the coach of Georgia Athletic. I think he was he was very vocal on the sideline to the officials. Well, and that's been the case really all evening, hasn't it? A lot of communication, not much of it positive, you would imagine. And now it's a three-person conference. This could be some disciplinary action to the Georgia Athletic bench. For now, it's just an explanation. You can see that she's motioning to her watch, so definitely upset about time wasting on both sides. Yeah, that's right. And yeah, well, we still could have a few minutes here to play, to be honest. I, if this conversation continues, I could see us getting into triple digits. I well, think. You can remember, Danny, just recently when you covered the FC Atlanta match, there was supposed to be four minutes of stoppage time and it ended up being 10 minutes. Yeah, that's right. I do. It was in another language, but memory still serves. It was an awfully interesting encounter, too, between FC Atlanta and UMA. Two teams that will also be fighting in kind of mid-table, hoping to avoid a relegation battle. Kalongji, maybe a chance. It's cleared away by Georgia Athletic. Not many players back in white. Could Georgia Athletic try and pull this off? That's a really big challenge in midfield, the sliding play, and Georgia Athletic seems to be content with letting more clock escape. Not going to chase that counter opportunity. Do remember, of course, they're down a man. And really, for a large portion of this game, Kalangji have been the better team. 2-2 Two -two has to feel like a great result at the moment. Long, long throw. That's exactly what they wanted to do with that. Kalangji, you have to start all the way over with the goalkeeper. Pleites. Moves it out to his left where there's nobody around. Car. Looking forward. Irving. 
And on Irving again, to the right side. And Badu dispossessed. Strong challenge, stays in play over there. Here come George Athletic, heavy challenge. It was a fair challenge, says the center referee, Mary Fernandez. It is a throw in, we hit minute 100. You see that tenacity by Georgia Athletic. Another yellow card for time wasting. Not quite sure which player it went to. There were really two or three to choose from in that instance. Might have been Fidel Mba there. Well, we continue to play. Long throw in, no touch. Kalonji let it go for a goal kick. Wisely doing so. Do they have any more time to try and grab the third and surely the winning goal? How much is left? Can't be much. Got to get things going quickly. Breaking through a few players. This cannot beat the Georgia Athletic defense. Will they win the ball back here? They will not. It's a foul instead. And well, Georgia Athletic has been vocal. Right in front of us with the crowd mic. And they are pleased, certainly, to get that free kick. And it just inches them ever closer. Minute 101. No more time to play in this one. But how much? Well, Kalanchi just took the ball. I don't know what happened there. Did we restart play here? No, we did not. Well, is that full time? They're, she's just going to go ahead and call full time there. <laughs> All That's right. That's well, an interesting way to end it. A complicated and compelling match ends in a complicated and compelling fashion. Kalanji Pro Profile 2, Georgia Athletic SC2. They grabbed two back after going 2-0 down early in this match. And the visitors find a way to earn a point and get, keep their unbeaten start to life in the Premier Division at three matches. Match day three is through, and it's Georgia Athletic, the newly promoted side, who lead the league after grabbing perhaps their most impressive results of the early season and their early life in the top flight with a 2-2 draw against one of the perennial powers. It finishes 2-2 here in Snellville. For Larry Weaver, myself, Danny Katula, everybody here at Atlantic Soccer Media Group, I want to say thanks for tuning in to our double header here in Snellville at Shiloh High School, Charlie Wilson Field, for tonight's couple of contests. Until next time, have a fantastic evening, and we'll see you next time on SMG TV. This has been a presentation of the UPSL. Any use of this broadcast without the written consent of the Atlantic Soccer Media Group is prohibited.